Hi, I'm Simon Vijaya, founder of EdgeDogs.com and Edge Commons, the dirty little helpers for Edge Animate. Edge Animate is getting mature. Almost two years have passed by since the early previews of this new creative tool. I have been involved since day one and I spend lots of time with Animate doing experiments and really trying to push the boundaries. So I have lots of cool stuff to show and insights and even libraries and components to share with you. We will have several announcements during the week. Today we officially launched edgedogs.com with the motto Everything Edge. We gather everything related to Edge tools and services, so we will provide you with lots of tutorials, documentations and extensions. In this first episode I will give you an introduction to Edge Animate and guide you through the steps to start being creative. So this is Annie from the Create Like Crazy gang and Annie is going to be our guide for this tutorial. And before we start taking a look at the workflow options you have with Edge Animate and the publishing options, let's have a look what you actually can build with Edge Animate. Let me walk you through some examples. So of course you can build um, banner animations with Edge Animate. So this is an example I built uh, for our uh, open competence network called Insider in Germany. So it's really a simple animation, logo animation. So yeah, that's really easy to, to create. So this animation just took me about five minutes. So that's really simple. And another thing is, of course, you can use Edge Animate to really uh, create stories. So this, for example, is a, sl uh, a simple slide deck we built for a presentation. So you can simply slide uh, through all, all the content. Um, and of course, it's really great to create something like that uh, with the tool like Edge Animate. So it's really what you see is what you get. So you can really tweak all the animations, which is really uh, important for uh, storytelling. So yeah, that's uh, of course great. And the great thing is it's based on web standards. So you can publish it on the web uh, instantly. So that's really uh, great. But of course you're not limited to that. Um, so you cannot just build uh, entire animations um, or full screen animations or uh, simple banner animations, but you also can use Edge Animate to enhance uh, your your websites. For example, um, as you can see on the week.edgedocs.com website, we used Edge Animate to, to create uh, templates. Um, so this collapsing effect was completely built with Edge Animate. Um, so it was really easy to lay out all the elements and to, to really create this animation. Uh, and of course you could have uh, done that uh, in uh, in JavaScript, in plain JavaScript or in jQuery as well. But I bet it would be way more time consuming. And that's the great thing about Edge Animate. It's really easy and simple to, to get started and to build uh, really engaging content uh, without the hassle you have with uh, maybe pure JavaScript. Uh, and then the uh, another option is um, you can use Edge Animate uh, for digital publications. So it's really easy to export your creative work from Edge Animate to um, InDesign. So you can export then uh, your InDesign compositions with the digital publishing suite. So it's really easy to bring your uh, animated content to, to iOS and to Android tablets. Uh, so yeah, that's another thing uh, you can do with that. So let's move uh, over back to the workflow options. So of course, everything starts with the creation process. So you can use um, creative tools of your choice. For example, Adobe Illustrator to create scalable vector graphics. You can use Photoshop and Fireworks, for example, to create um, tr um, PNGs with uh, transparency. But it's also possible, of course, in a limited way, to be creative and to create new assets uh, in Animate itself. Uh, I have um, a pretty cool example for that, but I've, uh, I will come to that uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, and when you're ready with the creation process, you can, of course, start using the timeline and uh, um, throw some uh, keyframes uh, uh, into the, the animation and you can use easing. So it's uh, really easy to create in animations. And then, of course, you can uh, use uh, um, JavaScript or jQuery or the specific Edge Animate API to create interactions. Uh, and that is really great. It's really kind of an open door for all kinds of crazy stuff. For example, the Edge Commons, uh, which is uh, a li little extension. Um, so you get some um, uh, components out of the box that you can use in your animations. Uh, so yeah, that's really great. And um, the final step, of course, is publishing. 
So let's have a look what we can do with Edge Animate um, in case of publishing. So you can, of course, export everything uh, since it's uh, web standards based uh, to a browser. So, of course, it runs in, in all modern browsers. Um, and you can, of course, use this uh, generated code, of course, as well in projects you've built, for example, with Dreamweaver or Edge Code or Brackets. Um, and you can even uh, use your animations to pimp your WordPress or Drupal website. So if you're interested uh, in these topics, you definitely have to check out our other episodes and especially the Edge comments because we have uh, uh, special modules for WordPress and Drupal. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you can use your animations in InDesign DPS projects as well. So let's have a look how we actually can get started. So in case you don't have Animate installed yet, uh, the best uh, starting point is html.adobe.com and then you can choose uh, um, Edge Tools and Services and that's actually the starting point for the Edge Tools and Services. So um, if you're interested in Animate, Reflow, Code, Inspect, Phone Gap Build and all that cool stuff, this is the place to go. And then you can of course um, select Animate and then you can scroll down and then you will find the getting, uh, Get Started button which actually will throw you um, to the uh, creative.adobe.com website. So if you really just want to, to uh, install Edge Animate, this is the, the perfect uh, address for you. So you can sign up or uh, yeah, you can sign up for a trial or you can use your um, existing account if you already have a, a Creative Cloud membership. Uh, and when you are logged in, you have this uh, um, menu item apps in the top and then you get all the icons with the download links for the, all the applications. and uh, right here you find the section for the Edge Tools and Services. So you can simply hit the download button um, just below Edge Animate and you can start uh, installing uh, this tool. And the great thing, uh, big kudos to Adobe, uh, Edge Animate 1.x uh, is completely free. Um, so yeah, that's really great. Adobe will uh, start charging um, with Edge Animate 2.0. So uh, right now it's really easy and uh, um, to start with Edge Animate and it, it doesn't even uh, cost a, a dime. So yeah, that's really great. So let's uh, open Edge Animate. So this is what Adobe Edge Animate looks like when you open it the first time. So on the right hand side, we have some in-app lessons you can walk through if you're really new to Edge Animate. So yeah, let's uh, open a new uh, project. So we simply hit create new. Um, and what we now see is the the user interface of Edge Animate. So let's start with um, this little toolbar at the top. So um, these are the creation tools. So you can, for example, create a rectangle uh, with rounded uh, corners as well. And for example, you can also create a circle and you can add some text to your composition. So yeah, that's really straightforward. Um, so in the center, we have the stage. That's the the real preview actually. So this already is a WebKit engine. So this is really what you see is what you get. And you have of course all the transformation tools so you can move things around, you can scale them uh, and stuff like that. And you might already have noticed that whenever I change my selection on the stage, the property inspector on the left hand side changes as well. So for example, if we do not select anything, we see the properties of the stage. So now we can, for example, um, resize the stage or make it a little bit um, smaller. We can uh, add a preloader, for example. We can add some poster images. And we even can create a down-level stage for all the browsers. So yeah, that's really great. Uh, and of course, we can then select some items uh, on the stage and we can, for example, change the opacity. We can change uh, the color of our element. We can add some, some gradient uh, to our element. We can, of course, change uh, the font types. We even can add new fonts. So um, there's a real tight integration of Edge web fonts. So for example, uh, if you like, uh, I don't know, Doses, uh, which is a real cool font, um, you can simply add that to your composition as well. And you, then you see this is a, a custom font and you can, of course, change the size. And, and one important thing I want to mention here is that all the properties you can see in the property inspector are actually CSS um, properties. So this is really rendering um, uh, in the WebKit engine. So 
you can't do anything that is not possible in WebKit. So that's really great, especially for prototyping or for designers that are not familiar with web uh, in particular. So it's uh, way better than using Photoshop, for example, um, because um, you you would never ever build something uh, in Edge Animate that is not possible in the web. So yeah, that's, I think, a big, uh, big advantage as well. And then, of course, we have the the timeline uh, on, on the bottom. So that is where all the animation magic happens. So we, of course, have all the tracks for the elements we have on the stage. Uh, and when we have a playhead, so we can use to scrub through the uh, animation. And on the right hand side, we have all the elements in a tree structure. So, for example, it is possible to to move things around or even to group things just like this. Um, and as you already can see right here, we can see all these elements are div containers. So this is actually a representation of the DOM we are just building. And below that, uh, there's the library where all the assets are stored. So every image you use in your composition will be listed here. All the symbols you just created uh, will be listed here. And of course, as you can see right here, all the custom fonts that are used in this composition are listed here as well. And of course, all this looks still a little bit primitive. And that is just because we are just using div containers and CSS properties to create our elements. And that is, of course, uh, limited, as you can imagine. Let me just open a small demo. So this is a, a scene, or actually a demo, I have built with Edge Animate 1.0. So let me zoom out a little bit. So now you can see everything. Uh, and this is a scene that uh, I built with just rectangles. So I just used some some uh, rounded corners, some uh, some skewing, some shadows. Uh, and as you can see in the elements section right here, there are a bunch of elements. Uh, and of course, I can select each element on the stage. And then you can see, for example, the skewing uh, and everything else. And uh, you can even see this uh, this depth of field uh, kind of thing that was just realized with some multiplying of different shadows. So, of course, I now could start animating all the, the different aspects. But yeah, that's kind of um, pushing the boundaries uh, in terms of being creative with just rectangles. But of course, you can use Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and then simply export the assets and use them in Animate as well. So let's see what Edge Animate has to offer in its supreme discipline. So let's create a new project. And let's import some assets. I've prepared a simple PNG file, which can be dropped right on the stage. So we can move our character to the final position of our animation. For example, something like this. And then the next step, we will use the pin. And the pin is a real great feature that was introduced to Adobe Edge Animate. And the pin can be activated with this icon. Or you can activate or deactivate it with simply double clicking on the playhead. So now we have the pin disabled. So we move uh, the player to the final uh, position, which should be by two seconds. So we want an animation uh, with a duration of two seconds. So now I can enable the pin and move the player back to, to zero. So what actually is happening right now is this position that we see right now on the stage is getting pinned um, at the position of the blue playhead. So um, at two seconds. So now we are safe to move uh, our character around. And now you see with the pin enabled, we get a sequence, an animation sequence right here. A good thing is to always disable the pin before you do uh, another animation. Otherwise, it could get uh, a little messy with uh, too many unwanted keyframes. So Annie is sliding in from the right to the left. And we can hit the space bar to actually see a preview uh, in the on the stage. So it's already a, a great animation, but uh, it's a little bit too uh, too linear, a little bit too mechanical. So what we can do now, we can simply select this animation sequence, and we can choose one of these easings. So we can, for example, say ease out, and in this case, we want. Uh, 
some elastic effect. Uh, so this is always great for demonstrations, but uh, I always think of uh, elastic and bouncing effects as some kind of uh, the the comic sense uh, of the easing function. So do not uh, use that in real projects uh, too often. But as I mentioned for demos, it's it's really great. So now we uh, we see what's happening. So we have uh, a, a way more uh, vivid animation going on now. It's maybe a little bit too fast, so we can maybe extend the duration just by dragging this keyframe to, for example, three seconds. So now we see this animation uh, is played a little bit slower. So yeah, that's almost it. So now we can, for example, save this uh, composition to uh, a folder of our choice. So I simply copy to, to somewhere on the, the desktop. Let's call this index. So now it's saved. So now we can hit command enter or choose uh, it from the menu preview and browser. So now uh, a Chrome instance is opened and we see the actual animation is uh, playing and we can uh, take a look at the Google uh, developer tools and we see there is no flash involved. So this is really web standards only. So we are, have a bunch of CSS uh, uh, statements here and the div container. So let's have a look at the output of Edge Animate. So in this case, we simply saved our composition. So we now have a AN file, which is um, a plain text file where, with some JSON data in it, but it's all, it's even safe to remove this file. So you don't really need it. It's just a start uh, start icon for your, uh, your composition. So what Animate really does is it saves its data into HTML and into JavaScript. So this is our starting file, index.html, of course, and all the composition stuff is saved in this file and uh, um, some actions we will write in the next uh, chapter would be saved in this file. You can really take these files and throw them uh, onto a FTP server, for example. So let's go back to animate again. So now we see we have our um, animation sequence here and we can, of course, do all um, kinds of other things right here. So we can, for example, say we want uh, our character to fade in at the same time. So we see now uh, that our character is fading in right here. So yeah, that's uh, great. And you can see that we have two tracks for each property one. So now it's even possible to change the duration, for example, for the opacity. So maybe we want the opacity um, to start a little bit later and maybe make it uh, a uh, linear. So now we can see that it's only visible in the second part. Yeah, and of course we can throw all kinds of uh, elements uh, to the stage and then start animating all that stuff. So yeah, that's, that's really great. Uh, if you have really complex animations. And of course, it's even possible to group things. So you can, for example, um, select more than one item and then say convert to symbol, uh, give the symbol a name, save that, and then you can go into the symbol and each symbol has its own timeline. So if you're familiar with the uh, flash display list, uh, that's uh, pretty much the same. So a symbol in, in animate is uh, really comparable to a movie clip in, in Flash. So now we want to add some interaction to our composition. So I have completed this composition. So now we have a speech bubble and we simply animate this with some keyframes on the timeline. So we can run that in the browser and we see that the entire animation is played. But that's not the behavior we want to create. We want the animation to stop whenever animate has appeared completely and then wait for a click. So the user should be able to click on the character and then uh, Annie should say hi. So let's have a look how we can achieve something like that. So it's actually pretty simple. So we can move our playhead to the position where we want to stop the animation. And whenever we want to call a action that is on the timeline, so at a specific position, 
we can simply add a trigger. Uh, click on this item and then we see this small code window and now we can say the symbol, which in this case is the current symbol, which is the stage. So now we can say stop. And when we run that in the browser again, we will see that the composition stops exactly where we place the trigger. So now what we want to do is to add uh, a click interaction to the character. So we can select the character on the stage, um, make a right click on the character and then say open actions for this character. And then we have this list of uh, events we can, we can use. So in this case, we would simply want to use the click event. So we select this and now we can say sim dot play. So again, sim is a reference that uh, gets passed in into the function we are in right now. So um, it's again the, the timeline of the stage. So now we can say play, which makes the timeline play again after we stopped it. So we see this in the browser again, the composition stops. And when we now click on the character, we see that the composition uh, plays again. And maybe we want to tweak this a little bit so we can add uh, the pointer, the hand cursor, so the user really sees that this is a hotspot element and then he, that he can click on it. So now we can see this uh, the mouse pointer that has changed and we can click on it and we see the animation playing. And that's of course really uh, just a primitive example of interactions. But as I mentioned before, you can also use um, lots of JavaScript and jQuery code in there, um, which makes it possible to to incorporate all kinds of third-party libraries, for example, the edge commons. So you definitely have to check out edgecommons.org. So um, the dirty little helpers for edge animate um, will uh, give you some more components to use and some more advanced features. For example, you can create a parallax with just one single line of code. You can uh, add interactive SVGs. You can use a spotlight overlay to show um, images, uh, uh, animations, and even YouTube videos as an overlay. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, really great. And we also have uh, components at edgedocs.com. Uh, there's the marketplace. So you can download, for example, some navigation components that you can use right out of the box. Uh, yeah, that's really great. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, getting started tutorial with Edge Animate. Um, and I'm really looking forward to what you guys out there are going to build with this amazing new tool.